Introduction of the Year, which is uh, John Giraudoux's Mandelman of Shiloh. Uh, it's done occasionally. Um, it's, I think it's probably rare enough that I'm guessing most of you haven't seen it, unless you came to our production 10 years ago. Um, yes, and Carter saw it 10 years ago. Uh, it's, it's an interesting play, and I'm not going to say much about it, except that the writer, Giraudoux, and I think Leslie probably put a bio in there, uh, he was in his early 60s when he died in 1944, and he, this play he wrote in Paris in 43, and so he never saw it performed, but the company that he worked with performed it the year after his death, 1945. So just to know the setting there is that this is a man who is uh, at this point considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, um, first and second world between that whole period, the first and second world war and uh, the time in between. Probably the greatest playwright of that time. He was known first as a novelist, and then uh, and this was the last thing that he, the last major work that he wrote, uh, and so. The context I set for you now is the, the Nazis had um, uh, taken over Paris, and that's where we begin, in the Paris Café. And we're setting it about that time, in the early 40s. And then it becomes a fairy tale. So let's see what happens. Thank you so much. And Kale reminds me, with his brand new cell phone, which still doesn't know how to use, mute or turn off your phones, please. Well, until I turned 50, my life was simple. 
my deal is limited to selling off the properties I inherited one by one to pay for my mistresses. Three years ago, my apartment was my last bar. Two years ago, I lost my last mistress. And now, all I have left... Bro, this is the end Scram! And now, all I have left is my name. And your name is precisely the name we need on our board of directors. Very flattering. You see, mine has been a very different experience. I came up from the bottom. My mother worked herself to death as a cleaning woman to pay my school fees. I never saw her except bent over scrubbing floors. I'm eternally grateful for her, of course, but I must confess, I no longer remember her face, only her rear. <laughs> Expelled from school for the fifth and last time, I decided to find out what makes the world go round. I ran errands for an editor, a movie star, a financier, and began to understand a little bit of what life is. Then, one day in the metro, I saw a face. From that day, my fortune was made. Really? One look at that face, and I knew. One look at mine, and he knew. He gave me the opportunity to earn my first real thousand francs by passing counterfeit money. Another face launched my talent by putting me in charge of a sales team for defective flashlight batteries. Since then, all I have had to do is look out for such faces. And now, here I am. CEO of a dozen corporations, chairman of 52 boards of directors, and beginning today, the, the and beginning today, the ch international, the chairman of the international, on which you have just accepted a seat. <laughs> Looking for something? Hey, give me drop. I never drop anything. Also, I guess this hundred franc note is yours. Hey, give me that note. Prosperous in 
condition to enable me to afford a full pair. Bear, I have no control over your actions. My only authority is to establish at our first board meeting the amount of your stock options and the eventual grant of a company car. But circumstances compel me to make the modest wish that you will buy nothing from this woman. I could never resist so gracious a request. But who will buy the poor devil's wares if we don't? She doesn't need your help. An intolerable symbiosis allows that riffraff to get along without us. The shoelace peddlers sell to the barefoot. The, the shoelace sellers sell to the barefoot. The necktie peddlers of, sell to the ragamuffins. The hawkers of rubber duckies to construction workers. Hence, the arrogance in their voices, the insolence in their looks. Hence, that revolting independence. Don't encourage them with your patronage. Ah, look, here comes my arbitrage rule. Bravo, it's the face of me. For good reason, Mr. Chairman. We won. Listen, we can make a killing. Oh. <laughs> Listen, faded friend. Numero uno, location of shares. Certificates issued at par, par value 100%. I said a share of common stock at 110, the rate of a preferred share, which gives me the right to sell it back at 112, so that the quoted price is fixed. And after some manipulated fluctuation at 91 and 115, there were wars spread on my agents. Ergo, hysteria in the market. Ergo, buyback by us. Classic maneuver. Never fail. Who really asked? No, any explanation would only confuse you. As for the bond issue, well, I'm like the same thing in the verse. I'm sure a normal rise by a temporary fall, and maybe the ghost of to the bearer, the untransferable registered securities, by extending a free floating deadline and announcing an official split of the actual dividends. Ergo, panic among the investors. Two. Size. One of the generals! <laughs> Ergo massive, Ergo massive buyback by a year company. Beg for peace. Ergo bullish buyback by those shareholders. Had been completely ruined by my first operation. Marvelous. And how many shares deserved as a windfall for each member of the board? 50 at three. Do you think that's enough? All right, 3,000. Get all <laughs> I'm beginning to. And the investment stock broker? The investment stay tuned for my masterpiece. Through the permit inspector finances in charge of public works, I register a collective investment scheme and transfer to, to the state of the count the insurance company earmarked to cover the construction workers on the massive central dam. The hedge funds reserved that savings capital are paid out entirely to the company and the mercantile bank, which returns to us a tenth of your of your friends one hundred. What's left is the untouched reserve, which is supposed to cover the tax on capital gains, but which we will be allowed to claim as operating expenses. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an obstacle. An obstacle surrounded in a single band. Through the inspector of finances permanently signed to the Temper Committee on Textiles, I treasure to link my the reserve of Latin cotton as provided for raw materials by pair of blood on finished cloth. God, what an inspiration. Ergo, a Wall Street competitor has a bit of epilepsy right on the floor of the stock exchange. Ergo, an atmosphere of suspense on the street. Ergo, worldwide buyback by a cartel. Ergo, stamping to the small shareholders alerted to buy your telemarketers. There we are, my dear chairman. Our day ends will total bio of future contracts. They're beating down the doors of our offices of Avenue Day for me and Avenue Day for done. Lovely names of military victories. <laughs> Have a seat this year, if you please. My life is ending this year. Here they are. Everything I own. I was listening to you. I know how you operate. I trust you, body and soul. If you really know how we operate, then you know that it's a shareholder who gives us the receipts. Of course. What was I thinking? Here it is, monsieur. My eternal gratitude. Do you hear, mademoiselle, those munitions from hell? Is she ever going to shut up? And why does she have to keep repeating the same two lines like a parrot? Like a parrot. Like a parrot. Those are the only two lines she knows. Impossible to find Lavelle Belle Bolognese in the music stores. She's hoping someone will hear her and teach her the rest of them these days. Well, it won't be me. To hell with her. No, I, my dear sir. Especially since I am in the same boat, considering the only someone I say is a child. I'm a servant too, in case you're interested. I'm not. Why is it so easy to forget the words of berserkers, my dear sir? Probably because they melt into that irresistible melody. All I can remember of mine are the first two lines. Maestro?
the water. I have postponed that experience. A prospector is a taster of water. Water remains the great informant of the Earth's secrets, and even the pure spring can help but reveal its bowels. Now, yesterday, at this very table, I shivered at the first sip of the water in my craft. I had a second, a third, a fifth. I, I was not mistaken. My taste buds soared with the most delectable flavor known to a prospector. That of crude oil. Crude oil and shadow! Good grief! Wait or quit! A crack of more glass! We shall drink the banker's trust. This will be my treat, Baron. Delighted.
adversary. My only adversary. The engineer who for 20 years has refused me a permit to prospect in Paris. The only man I have found in this vile world impervious to our arguments. We're all ears. Lord, what does this one want now? Only your help, monsieur. Or rather, the help of your feet. <laughs> As the feet go, so goes the man. Men of the Gulf of Central Death, Navy retired. Specialists in the bomb on flea and tick removal. These days, cutting off horns and calluses. In case of an emergency, Marshal the waiter will give me my address. In case of an immediate operation, here I am at this table. <laughs> and the, that gold letter, Marshal, still rattling. Still full of stones, Doctor. Mm. Cronius, Cronius, the sound of the rattlesnake. That's the correct diagnosis. My Pernod? My Pernod. My Pernod. Oh, Countess, that left kidney, so the Fuck Nick, Mary, sir. What folks doesn't sink, you'll be all right. Uh, it's <laughs> enough to drive you crazy. Well, let's go somewhere else. No, this is the best spot to watch the show. Besides, it's nearly noon. In five minutes. In five minutes. The villa of our enemy, the engineer, is going to blow up. A young man whom I made an offer he could never refuse is planting small charges of nitroglycerin there right now. Dear me, I see a prospect that involves the most upstate techniques. Ah, uh, you'd be wrong there, Baron. Before you abscond the treasure, you always have to slay the gar the jar the, the dragon guard. In our line of work, Baron, we pay homage to honest folks by making their honest lives as dangerous as a life of crime. It is an axiom among prospectors that dead men, like oil, never sink. Are you sure the explosion can't reach us over here? Have no fear, but look, they're watching us. Come, let's pretend to be a person discussion. I so look forward to the Shio of Mr. Brickrath. Indeed. <laughs> Than the younger one. He does his military service here later. 
thrilling, the mysteries of birth, so near yet so far from the mysteries of life saving. That's also the reason that Queen always gives birth in front of witnesses. Oh, we're in a madhouse. I will never escape it. That old woman is looking at us strangely. A crowd is forming. Uh, disappear, chairman. I will lay my hands on the double cross and the coast is clear. And now, I come to a question which has a lot of basic Thought of your good looking Diane, despite the fact that I am 36. I have never fallen in love. Is it true that. Lightburn! Lightburn! What's the matter? Two women on Avenue Wilson calling for help! Two women at once, standing up, lying down, housewives, queens? Hard to tell, quick! Come on, come on! For pity's sake, I'm on my way, gentlemen! I have passions. I love to play gin rummy. I 
If the young man finds that appealing, Irma can set up a card table in the back room. Gin, rummy, and a glass of beer. If he has an hour to kill. He, he has himself to kill. Is that all the police can come up with by way of earthly bliss? Earthly bliss? You mean Therese? Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. You are earning your salary, officer. I defy any young man intent on killing himself to give it up after listening to you. Well, maybe you can do that. Of course I can. He can't be genuinely desperate. A young man who has just fallen in love with a young woman who has just fallen in love with him. It isn't true. How could she love me? She does love you, Fabrice. People can fall in love just by holding hands. Did you ever know the niece of General Pershing? How could you have known her? Well, lots of people knew her when she was alive. Oh, stay put, Fabrice. I want to kill myself. You see, you can't attach him to life any more than I could. Let's make a bet. I bet one of the buttons on your uniform. I can guess why you jumped into the river, Fabrice. No, you can't. It's because that prospector asked you to commit a crime. How did you know? He stole my boa, and now he wants you to kill me. Certainly not. He's not the first, but I'm not easy to kill. <laughs> now I'm saving a drowning man. <laughs> I have no desire to die. What do you? All who live are lucky, Fabrice. Of course, when you first wake up, and you choose your hair for the day, and take your dentures out of the cup. Of course you feel a little out of place in this world, especially if you've just been dreaming about being a little girl, riding a donkey, and picking strawberries. <laughs> but all you need to feel to call to life is to find, in your mailbox, a letter with your schedule for the day. You wrote it to yourself the night before. Then, once you've washed your face in rose water and powdered it, put on your jewels, your brooches, and the cameo buttons and the Persian earrings. Basically, once you've dressed for breakfast and you've gotten a good look at yourself, then Fabrice, you are strong, you are ship shape, you are ready to face the world. The rest is merely pleasure, relaxation, reading the news paper first. Not the tabloids who spread lies and vulgarity. I read the Galois, the issue of October 7th, 1896. Oh, it's an excellent article. Some scandals, some splendid fashion notes, and the stock price item on the death of Lily Langtree. Oh, poor dear. She used to live by my house. My heart skips a beat every morning. I will lend it to you, but it's in tatters. Is that the issue where Oscar Wilde tells about his fight with the tiger? The very one. Ah, uh, yes, a tiger and his feet locked in hand to hand combat amid the pepper plants. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, once you've taken your Epsom salts, not in water. No matter what they say, it's water that causes flatulence. <laughs> what in gingerbread? Rain or shine, Chaillot is calling you. Now, all you have to do is put on your street clothes. That takes a little bit longer. You can't manage it under an hour without a chambermaid. What with the corset, corset cover, drawers, and that lace-up or button in the back. I took it to Coco Chanel once to have it refitted with a zipper. She was very polite, but declined. It would have ruined the silhouette. I was so bad for the Each his own prepares, Marshall. And then to pick out a lorgnette and to search in vain for the boa the prospector stole from me. I know he's the one. He would have looked me in the eye. And to tie up my parasol. It's lost its class ever since I stalked that, ever since I whacked that cat stalking the pigeon. I earned my heat that day. <laughs> Why don't you want that cat stalking? A Mexican gave me. It just gets the cavity and it brings the clock. Oh, no, thank you, Irma. They say those things sometimes come to life and start crying. I'd be too upset. I've had a little view of Budapest and Ivory. If it suited you, you'd see Buddha as if you were there. Go on, go on, ma'am. I implore you. What do you do next? Ah, so life interests you now? Go on, what a fool I've been. You see how beautiful it is? Go on, I won't try to kill myself again. What do you do next? I take my walk, for Greece. I go and inspect the doings of the wicked people of Shio, the ones who purse their lips, the ones who kick the walls of rooms in secrets, the enemies of trees, the enemies of animals. I watch them on their way to mislead people, heading to the steam bath, the podiatrist, the hairdresser, but they come out lame, dirty, False beards! To thwart the power of these ruffians, I have to cross their paths left and right. It's hard. Crime moves quickly, but I take broad strides. Don't I, my friends? <laughs> That's what life is, Fabrice. It tempts you now. It's marvelous, madame. My button, officer! 
And that's only the morning. In the afternoon, the real fun begins. My God, there he is. I've been looking for you, Pierre. I'm comfortable here. That one request. Come here. Fine. Can you please let go of my hand? No. Let go of me, madame. No. Gracious lady, would you be so, so kind as to let go of this man's hand? In all my life, I wouldn't be kind to you. Oh, I guess it's your time to make you let go. Ah! Oh! Disgusting! Little mist that rises. I ask you, what are you getting at? 
Tell her, Red Picker, or I'll sing it. Oh. <laughs> Just this, Countess. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. What are you talking about? There's an invasion. The world is no longer beautiful. The world is no longer happy because of the invasion. What invasion? You, you live in a dream. In the morning, once you've decided that men will be beautiful, a plumber's crack becomes a chair's cheeks. <laughs> We, we do not have this ability. For the past ten years, we've watched them come out of the shadows, uglier and uglier, wickeder and wickeder. You mean those four men who found Greece? Oh, if there were only four countess, it's an invasion. Once upon a time, when you traveled through Paris, the people were like you. They were you. They might be better dressed, or dirtier, or happy, or angry, or stingy, or generous. But, same as you, you were private, you were the colonel. That's it, there was equality. But ten years ago, I saw a man in the street among the pedestrians who had nothing in common with them. He swaggered, but in a funny sort of way, menacing and ill at ease, as if he had killed one of my regulars and taken his place. He, he had indeed killed him. He was the first. Since then, not a day goes by that one of my regulars disappears and one of these new ones replaces him. What are they like? They go bareheaded outdoors and indoors wear their hats on their heads. They talk out of the corners of their mouths. They don't run, they don't hurry, you never see one sweat. They have folds and pouches under their eyes that we don't have. You think that their mortal sins were different from ours. They have women like ours, but more luxurious and up to date. They bought mansions out of shop windows, for, and furs included, and then brought them to light for extra charge. Those are their wives. What do they do? Oh, Countess, they have no trade. When they meet in the stock exchange, they whisper and pass 5,000 franc notes. Oh, sorry, uh, I thought I saw a banana peel. More useful than you'd think. <laughs> you pass 5,000 franc notes. Once upon a time, everything, groceries, stage plays, seemed to sell itself, seemed to introduce itself. But now, everything eaten, everything seen, wine and shows, has a pimp that places it on the pavement and watches it doing nothing. That's them, my poor Countess. They are their pimps. So? So? Pimps run everything. Pimps ruin everything. Look at the shopkeepers. They don't smile anymore. They only have eyes for the pimps. I'm the, the, the butcher depends on the veal pimp, the auto mechanic on the gas pimp, the green grocer on the vegetable pimp. I'm sure there's a pineapple pimp and a pompano pimp. Ask Marshall. He knows them. When you drink your martini, up your 20 sous, two go to the gin pimp and two go to the vermouth pimp. It's gone, Countess, so that I prefer real things. I'd shake their hands, they take risks. Besides, that's how it should be. Some women are crazy about their pimps. Whereas a veal chop doesn't give a damn about its pimp. Excuse my French, up. Hey, never mind you about Vermin, you rascal. There, I've said it. The Countess knows it all. The age of slavery is upon us. We are the last free men. Soon the singer will have to do business with the song pimp and me with the garbage pimp, or it's all over. Is it true what the rag picker says to Greece? Even worse, madame. Did you know about this, Irma? I'm the busboy, yes, Countess. You've got to distrust everyone, not believe a word they say. I've stopped taking bets over the phone. The air itself is no longer wet up from the floors, Countess. I thought my fortress was a little bit higher to go out. There's an oxygen pimp. <laughs> They can't afford to. They walk. They are imbeciles, and so are you. Irma, why didn't you tell me? What can you tell me about it, Countess? We shall see this very evening. What is wrong with you, moaning and groaning instead of acting? You can live like this? A world in which no one is happy? Sunrise to sunset? In which no one is their own master? Are you cowards? For Fabrice, since all your tormentors are criminals, all you have to do is get rid of them. They are too many, madame. Four of them and ten of us. The sergeant will help. Who, me? Oh, right, to the commissioner to complain. <laughs> there are hundreds of them, Countess. The deaf mute knows them all. They want to hire him. They hire deaf mutes so they won't be betrayed. They fired him, probably because they 
they saw that he wasn't blind. They're all connected, like parts of a machine. They collude with one another. They support each other. They're tied together more tightly than mountain climbers by their rope. All the better! That will be their ruin. All you need to do is lure them all at once into the same trap. Impossible, Countess. They are suspicious. Our detective squad trips up every time. As soon as you get close to them, they change shape. I step up to the vice president, he turns into a chairman. The chairman into an honorary chairman. The stockbroker into a bondbroker. I, I creep up on the, lo on the lobbyist, he turns into a congressman. He's right, Countess. They have their power, they have their money, and they're greedy for more. Greedy? Then they're already lost. If they're greedy, they're stupid. Where are bad deals made? Only in the business world. I already have a plan, my friends. But tonight, you will be innocent, Fabrice. And your air will be a elastic juggler. And your beer, liberated, Marshall. To work, everyone! What are you going to do, Countess? Irma, do you have any lamp oil? Yes, pure kerosene in the pantry. I want it impure in a dirty bottle. Singer, go find Madame Constance. Tell her to meet me at 21 Rue de Chaillot.
they only go down. I'll go down and check. Don't you dare. The stairs are made so that it's easy to go down, but you cannot come up again. You came back up. I have sworn not to reveal the trick. You could simply shout. You could fire off a cannon. Who could have built such a thing? Paris is old, you know. Paris is very old. Does a source of crude oil have to run down there by chance? There's only death down there. I would have preferred some oil, too. Or a vein of gold. Or maybe some emeralds. Are you sure there isn't anything? Not even rats. Oh. And how do I close the spot back up again? To open, pull here. To close, push you. Especially strangers. But they're really very nice, I assure you. Hey, give me warning! Or is this going to be the same 
morning, since this morning at noon precisely. Why, this is really Be quiet! <laughs> since this morning at noon precisely, thanks to a young drowned man. Oh, while I think of it, you said she knew the words to La Belle Polonaise? Yes, Orly. All of it? Yes, Orly. You can see it right now. Well, yes, Orly, but I think you're the one who's getting us off track. Oh, you're right. Since this morning, at noon precisely, I've been privy to a horrible plot. Some bandits are trying to destroy Shio. Is that all? You can come live with me in Pathé. I never understood why you like Shio at nightfall. It has more bats than any neighborhood in here. <laughs> come you please. Just now, the basin of the bishop's fountain is filled with bullfrogs. It's delightful. You poor mad things. Saints will peace. You are in as much danger as I. Saint Sulpice is merrily <coughs> evicted, and so is Passy. You risk being forced to roam the streets like a couple of screech owls. Why a couple? You exclude yourself from this comparison. Three, if you insist. I like to see play. Well, I don't understand morally. Why should men destroy Saint Sulpice when it was men who built it? Oh, you poor mad things. Your eyes are no better than your ears. All this time, people who pretend to be in the business of construction are secretly dedica dedicated to destruction. What they build up like Rotarians, they tear down like barbarians. They build cities by destroying countrysides, harbors by destroying riverbanks. They take up space and sky with their surveying tools and time with their stopwatches. The business of humanity is nothing more than a universal commitment to demolition. I'm speaking, of course, primarily of male sex. Oh, orally! Orally! Master Fox. Yowling on your doorstep like a couple of tomcats. Meow, 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 me
more butt thieves because money rules the world. Ah, there it is, at last, you said it, because this is the reign of the golden calf. Surely you don't doubt this, Gabrielle. Nowadays men practically worship the golden calf. Horrible. The authorities know about it? The authorities do it themselves. Now you understand why I called you here, my friends. We have no one to depend upon but ourselves. If we do not do something, humanity is doomed. <laughs> I have my solution. You can try it if you'd like. You write the Prime Minister? Why not? He does whatever I tell him. Do you ever write? Does he ever write back? He knows I prefer him not to. He <laughs> might <laughs> take off though. What do you suggest, Gabrielle? Oh, you know Gabrielle. She will suggest we consult her voices. Exactly. I'll consult them and we'll meet again tonight. No, no, no. We don't have time. Besides, Gabrielle's voices have never been real. Well, Since he was assassinated in 1901. Yeah, 
<laughs> we must really appreciate your judgment to overlook your eccentricities and ask your advice. Here's the question in a nutshell. Your relationship with all of our Wendell Holmes gives you a particular advantage in this subject. Suppose you have all the criminals in the world gathered together in this room and the means to make them disappear forever. Do you have the right? Of course! Why not? Oh, no, no! <laughs> all those people, all those people have exactly the point. When you destroy, you have to destroy wholesale. All battles operate on this principle. You bring all the enemies together in one place, and you kill them! <laughs> if you had to kill them one by one by visiting their homes in the places of business, you get tired and give it up. I can think of it myself. Still, it's a splendid idea. I congratulate you, Orly. Well, in that case, I agree. Your criminals have had a fair trial, I suppose. A trial? With someone appointed to defend them who tried to prove their innocence? The law is unbending on this point. I am not that kind of counsel that a lawyer has spoken. I assure you, they're guilty. Really? Anyone accused has the right to defend Even animals. Before the flood, God let no one defend the cost of humanity. The poor man stuttered, it would seem. You know, there was only. <laughs>
lady speaking to this audience so elegant and so select. No flattery. The defense has been heard. Cross examination. Your witness for <laughs> Mr. Radcliffe. Oh, sorry. I should call you Chairman, shall I? At your service, Countess. Mr. Chairman, do you know what you are accused of? I can't imagine. My life is an open book. My morals are pure. My hands are uh, clean. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Nothing in his pocket. That's him all over. You are a barefaced liar. All the same, you can't insult him. He's lying on us. Your instructions. Be quiet, Constance. You don't understand things. <sighs> you are accused of worshiping money. Worshiping money? For heaven's sake. I worship sex. Well, I wallow in it. I worship gambling casinos. I worship geraniums. <sighs> geraniums? You see where you're Enormous wealth enables me to do so. And Amaryllis? My favorite, too. 
I am jotting down. I am jotting down the name. I am the realist. He's a barefaced liar about those flowers. He detests them. Don't interrupt the proceedings. He detests them as a rag figure. He loves them as an exploiter. All right, I'm just letting you know what he's like. Yes, the lady is wise. I could give a franc to the deaf mute, 20 francs, 20 million francs. It would have put a dent in the 40 times, 40 million. I am afflicted with right, the lady. Right. The poor understand this very well. This morning, I took 100 francs from a rag picker who found them under my table. And he let me do it because he understood. Because he's a big dope. <laughs> Sweet ill of rag pickers. But if you only knew about the wealth of generous imagination. They smell them here with them. <laughs> Order, get to the point, Sherman. If I buy a stock, it soars like an eagle. If you buy a stock, it plummets like a stone. I buy a It goes up to a thousand. Twenty thousand. It's what I used to buy my chateau in Chenon, so. My rose garden in Picardy. You're done here? <laughs> it's what I used to subsidize the Ritz Hotel where I keep my loving chorus. Oh. Why don't they all cheat on you? Impossible! They can cheat on me with a dozen poor chorus boys, the managerial staff, the stage hand, the French horn. I own them body and soul. It would be as if they were cheating on me with myself. Oh, oh disgusting! My smile, a motor car. What woman can resist me? When I lift my little finger, they fall like leaves in autumn. You bastard. <laughs> All the women, no exception. That's going a little too far. Yeah, you see yeah. what comes with money now, Gabrielle? It really is horrible. <laughs> what are you complaining about? It's only the truth. When you don't have money, nobody trusts you, nobody believes you, nobody likes you. Not true. Because you have. Money is to be virtuous, honest, beautiful, and witty. And to be a is to be stupid, boring, and useless. Oh, that's quite enough! You haven't mentioned the oil. What do you plan to do if you find the oil you're looking for in Shido? Oh, Countess, I plan to make war! I plan to conquer the world! You have heard the defense. As it is, I demand a verdict of guilt!
admit that to you. Yes, my dad. You put your mouth out of joy to call me Orly. It is I, Orly. Why did you leave? Was she so beautiful? That Georgette? A thousand times less beautiful than you. Was it her mind that attracted you then? She was stupid. Her soul? Her diaphanous form in this base world. Certainly not. That's just what I thought. That's just what a man does. He loves you because you are witty, beautiful, and you happiness. And as soon as he gets the chance, he leaves you for someone who is ugly, dull, and opaque. They are still coming from your hands. They are the only part that's being gave to me. I understand why you only approach me when my eyes are closed. But the rest is quite privilege. Yes. You have the right to do so. Yes, I've grown old. Not I. You've grown old like all those trampling, all those who trample over their old tracks. Dear Orly, forgive me. I will not forgive you. But you took her everywhere we had been together. I promise you. No promises. You bought her all the same flowers. You bought her chocolates and washes. And there's nothing left, is there? I still have all the flowers. I kept a dozen chocolates. I will never forgive you. I love you, Orly. Loved? Past tense. Are you dead? I love you, Orly. That's what I thought. That's who consoled me when you left. He is in Georgette's arms now, but he loves me. He goes to the opera with Georgette, but he loves me. But you do not love her. That is your punishment. You can never get rid of her, for you do not love her. Don't forget me. Love me. And now, hand my hands to little Pierre. I know what you want to know now. I held Pierre yesterday. It's his turn now. Get out. Ah, Pierre! Yes, madame. Oh. oh, is he gone? Yes, madame. Oh, just as well. He knows about making a quick exit, that one. Oh, heavens, my boa! I found it in your mirror dresser, madame. I'm afraid, Pierre. They're quaking in fear. I never went into my dresser because of that old woman that stared at me. But I could see through the doors what was inside it. Yesterday, it was empty. My most cherished possession was a little sewing box that they stole from me. It wasn't in the dresser, madame. Splendid. I have no obligation to be merciful. Put my bow on here. They'll think they're seeing a real boa constrictor. Here they are, Countess. They're coming to you with lots of them. The avenue is full of them. Leave me now, Pierre. I have nothing to fear. Do you want to patrol him? Yes, and I'll tell them your death as you ask me. Thank you. Oil, oil, traces, trickles, sparks, pools, 
Now, number five. With dog? With leather? No, nectar. It's feather top, my friends. The rarest kind of petroleum. How is it discovered? With a finger! <laughs> Sign here, please. What is it? Our contract shares dog options with you. Wow. What is it? The tool to lock her up. The asylum's been alerted. We'll call the ambulance as soon as we're out of here. Is that the bow, Madame? That's the well. Ah, oh, thank you. The agents of the people involved in national oil cartels. Oh, oh, it smells of crude oil in here. Too much so. I'm dining with Roland. She hates that smell. Let's not like Are you sure? Lucien told me he should have dining with Roland. I'm dining with me and Roland. If you want to bring Lucien, let, Le let Lulu know. You might have told us sooner. I'm dining with Janine, who's bringing Mado. The new she's dining at Paulo's. <laughs> Janine is dining with you then. All you have to do is call Roland and have Regina call her. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> when can we visit the reservoir? Right away! This is so urgent, friends. It's past three. If we let those elders have tea at the race with Georgette, you know her, she'll never forgive me. We have the Energy Commission at six. We have to decide on our initial investment. But the nation comes for us. Madame, could we get your signature on this without going down? Impossible! Then let's go down. It'll only take a minute, as Mimi says. <laughs> Will a minute be enough, Madame? Quite enough! Oh, look at this treasure I found on the stairs. Flowers, gentlemen? I'll take all your flowers. Your name, pretty child? What's a pretty name? Friends, the bee is treating us with flowers. <laughs> 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 go, 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 go. The executives of the advertising agency. <laughs> the man on the is very deaf. Lucky her. Otherwise, she'd be trying to work bitches conjugated into all his senses. I lay at your feet the most sincere homage, madame. What a face, like dark in hell. May I express my deepest and most potent admiration, madame? Keeping the Oscar for best performance by a witch. I rapturously kiss your divine hand, adorable creature. So, are we agreed? We charge this old bat the going rate of 30%? 40. She's completely seen up on us. 60. All right, 75. Here is an advertising contract, dear lady, with terms more favorable than ever before. Ah, perfect. That's the way to the well. Oh, madame, we do not care about the tour. Whether your reservoir is real or fake, it's our job to describe it with the same enthusiasm. There I won't sign! Ah, keep calm, keep calm. We'll take the tour. But if you insist on rubbing our noses in this oil, we'll have to raise our prices 30%. Michael. 
Thank you, madam. Tell me. As soon as I see one of those ugly bastards, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> 